President Trump's former chief strategist and campaign executive Steve Bannon took a break from battling Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell on the campaign trail to tackle a different subject yesterday, American foreign policy. Speaking at a think tank forum entitled Countering Violent Extremism, Bannon said that President Trump had it worse than any other president and also that it was not Trump's fault. One, two, three, four. What the, the, the geniuses in the foreign policy elite, what they left on President Trump is essentially the Bay of Pigs in Venezuela, the Cuban Missile Crisis in Korea, and the Vietnam War in Afghanistan, all at one time. This, President Trump didn't, didn't do this. The, the, the deplorables that voted for President Trump didn't do this. This is the geniuses of both political parties. Both political parties deliver this upon us. I don't think there's anything President Trump has done in this administration that makes us look isolationist at all. Uh, I think he doesn't want to get into these kind of arrangements like TPP and others where we're just another, uh, another person at the table, another entity at the table, and not something that we know it's in our vital national security interest. I, I've actually I've never been so distracted by someone I'm speaking so with what they're wearing as they was with the architect in the second. Uh, Are those Spanx? In the second Matrix. Did you see the Matrix? Oh, yeah. Remember the architect? And I couldn't right. understand what he's saying, but he had like 14 buttons on his white vest, so I just started counting the buttons. Hey, wait, here, I'm counting. with Bannon, I got lost halfway jacket, through, and he's got, he's got a jacket. Shirt, he's got two shirt, button downs and a Spanx. Spanx. Yeah, got the Spanx underneath all of it. So that's fascinating. Uh, Admiral would like to talk about that a little bit more, but first, let's, uh, let's go through through his claims. Uh, Donald Trump uh, inherited the Bay of Pigs in Venezuela. I don't get that one. Vietnam and Afghanistan, over 55, 56, 57,000 Americans died in Vietnam, not so in Afghanistan. Uh, and for different reasons, uh, that we're in Afghanistan than uh, Vietnam. And the Cuban Missile Crisis in um, North Korea. He did inherit an absolute mess in North Korea. Uh, but uh, he's taken a bad situation <laughs> and made it considerably. He's doubled worse. down. You know, we actually, Peggy Noonan said the best strategy against Barack Obama was he inherited a bad situation and he made it worse. And I believe that on foreign policy. I know a lot of uh, Barack Obama supporters and people that worked hard there might respectfully disagree. But it, even if I'm wrong on that, you certainly could say that about Donald Trump in North Korea. President Obama told Donald Trump, you're, you're, what's going to keep you awake at night is not going to be health care. It's going to be North Korea. And it seems Donald Trump has done everything he's been capable of doing as a president to make that situation worse. What, how do you assess uh, what Steve Bannon said and also Donald Trump's handling of North Korea? Am I being too tough on him? No, I don't think you are, Joe. And uh, Steve Bannon, I think everything he said was kind of inexplicable. And it's just a, an attempt, as you often see in this administration, to kind of link a bunch of cars together on a train and then just run the rail uh, right off the side of the mountain. So yeah. let's just kind of put that aside. Um, in terms of North Korea, what President Trump personally has done, and it ties back to that first segment on cyberbullying, mm -hmm. um, it, it, it is going to do nothing but inflame the situation, make it worse. That doesn't mean we have to sit down and have lunch in the schoolyard with Kim Jong-un, but it means that we ought to be measured, we ought to be cool in our commentary, we ought to let our actions speak, we shouldn't descend to the personal. All of that is counter to taking and creating order out of chaos. We have a president on foreign policy who injects chaos into the system, and then those around him try and restore order to it. That's a really bad way to run foreign policy in general, and it's a very dangerous way to run foreign policy with North Korea. Really a very bad way to run foreign policy for Steve Bannon, a very bad way to wear your shirt. Uh, I mean, I don't wait, want to take my eye off the ball, look. but have we ever gotten an explanation for the three shirts? There must be some reason I, well, to wear somebody, three perspiration shirts. Somebody thing? said oh, it was maybe. in California like a surf thing. No. What? No. 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 I don't know. Been, if anyone knows, I've please, been Manhattan please Beach. call in. Tweet nobody, the show. Let us know Nobody in Manhattan Admin Beach can know your uh, value. looks like Tweet that, me. do they? He likes the layered look. You know, the thing with Bannon, though, running sort of the shadow anti-establishment campaign is President Trump's going to have lunch today at the Senate policy lunch. He's going to sit down with these people who 
he's been railing against, whether it's Bob Corker or Mitch yeah. McConnell or Jeff Flake, but who Steve Bannon really has been railing against and saying, we're going to primary every one of you except for Ted Cruz. How do you sit down with these guys who you've just been destroying and who your, your former senior advisor has been destroying from the outside and threatening their jobs and everything else and saying they're the reason we are where we are and say, let's do tax reform now? Yeah. This, this is, again, it is, I mean, this is so basic. And I, I just wonder why Republicans in, uh, in the Senate and even in the House uh, don't know the basics of politics, which is... It doesn't matter how powerful somebody is in Washington, D.C. If they say they're coming after you, you say, you may be more powerful than me, but I'm going to stay awake 24 hours a day, and I'm going to figure out how to make your life a living, breathing hell. I'm going to stay on you, and I'm going to hound you, and I'm going to leak stories about you, and I'm going to come at you in the front. And, I, and you know what happens when you do that? They call you into the office, and they say, let's work together. I know from personal experience, that's what they do. These Republicans are unscared. If somebody said they were gonna primary me and then invited me to dinner, I would send them a note with two words on them. The last word being you. I wouldn't go. Yeah, you figure that Bless out. You. Thank you. Bless you, thank you. Yeah. However, yeah. no, I'm, I'm just saying, that, but, but that's never been anybody's attitude. They've let them, they've, they've been run over. Mm. Paul Ryan has allowed Bannon to attack him nonstop and still be associated with the president. If you're Speaker of the House, Don't. if you are the third most powerful person in government, you say to the president, hey, here's the deal, buddy. You can be C. Bannon's friend or you can be my friend. You can't be both. Mitch McConnell should say to the president today, hey, Mr. President, you can be aligned with Steve Bannon, you can be aligned with me, you can't be aligned with both. And let me tell you something, I can screw your world up a lot more than Steve Bannon. I'm sitting at 19% now, what do I have to lose? I'll turn you into a pile of dust. Maybe my numbers go up to 21%, maybe they drop to 17 It's a risk I'm, I'm willing to take, Mr. <laughs> President. No, I swear to God, I I'm not talking you. to a camera. This is anybody that knows politics. What do you think Tip O'Neill? Tip O'Neill did that to Jimmy too. Carter because he didn't like the seats Carter gave him at the inauguration. And then Tip O'Neill wrote about it in his biography. You're, you're right that they could be doing more publicly, but I will say that the flip side of what you're saying is the president learned in business that you could mess with somebody, but then if the next deal comes around and it's a good deal for both sides, they'll come back to the table. That's not how that's, politics uh, works. Having a short that's, memory right, as a politician. But that's correct, but it, it works in business sometimes. It does not work uh, in politics. Right. And every Republican knows what he did to Bob Corker. Everyone. And it impacts how they think about the president. Yeah, so are they scared? Is that what you're yes. saying? So you're uh, saying like Senator Bill Cassidy, when he says the president doesn't lie and that he actually speaks in hyperbole and made a complaint complete fool of himself a complete fool of himself he did that because he was scared of trump and because they've compartmentalized and said this is what we're going to do and do but 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 i'm telling but mark you, you have it backwards yeah. bob corker doesn't have anything to lose at this point well donald well, trump has something to lose beware the man with nothing correct. to lose and and if you actually go after a president and you hammer a president i have found again or if you hammer a powerful speaker i have found again if you stay on it if you stay on it and you believe you are rewarded if you just kind of go in and, and, and then back and and let, let's bring in the admiral here i don't admiral? know admiral i know that the, 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 that fights inside the pentagon are all pure as driven snow but if somebody is coming after you like, just give us some management advice. If, if, let's say that you were talking to a young captain who said, man, I get this guy that, that keeps saying he's going to destroy me, he's going to crush me, and, and now he's inviting me to lunch with Calling the very people names. that he said he's going to use to crush me. What do you, what do, you do? Ma just management 101. Uh, management 101 would tell you that you need to be treating everybody equally, going up the chain of command, down the chain of command, and with your peer group. And that's not a skill set that the president has shown us. What I really worry about, Joe and Mika, is 
geopolitics as opposed to politics. Everything you've said is about kind of domestic politics and management. Think about what a misstep it is to take that into the international realm. Beware, as you said, Joe, of the man who has nothing to lose. That's the corner we're starting to push Kim Jong-un into, oh, and in Lord. that corner, he's got 25 nuclear weapons. So, yeah, I worry about it in Washington politically. I worry about it in management and leadership. I really worry about it in geopolitics as opposed to politics. Yeah. Chilling. Absolutely chilling. Bob Corker has already rolled his eyes at this lunch with the president on Sunday. He told one of our or today he told one of our Capitol Hill reporters that it's nothing more than a photo op. We'll see if he attends the lunch. I think yep. he's supposed to. Um, but for some of these senators who are facing potential primaries, if you listen to somebody like John Thune yesterday, he's saying, "Yeah, he hasn't been great to us, the president." But it's not just that he doesn't have anything to show for his first year in office. We don't have anything to show. We made all these promises about repealing and place, replacing Obamacare, about having tax reform. We've got to have this lunch. We've got to get something done with them because we've got elections coming up ourselves and we've got to go home to our voters and say we've actually done I would something suggest here. stepping yeah. up and closing in might be the more productive measure at this point. If you're getting nothing done, listen to what the admiral said about the chilling potential out yeah. there in the world. People need to close in and speak truth to this problem. President Admiral James Stravitas, thank you thank so you, much. Thank you, Admiral. Greatly appreciate Always it. Always great. Still ahead Thanks on a lot, guys. Joe. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube, and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.